This lecture will be Women Power in Middle Earth, as you can see from the title. And this was actually my dissertation when I was studying drama in England, and I graduated as the Bachelor of Arts last sem September so I, from the University of Winchester. So in my topic in the dissertation was actually this question you can see in here. How do the active female characters in the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit movie trilogy suit as a role models for modern people? And about the survey, because I made a survey for this one, so this is not actually my opinion, but 250 other people's opinion. And there, there was a research that was executed through a gender and age blood survey and some academic reading, I will be reading in here as well, through some researchers. And the main research was about these four characters' suitability as role models for modern people. And as modern people, I mean us who are living now, this decade or the last decade, who has seen the films and lived through the films. And the secondary research in here was to study how important escapism is for spectator. So the four characters I'm going to research in here are Arwen, Galatriel, Eowyn and Toriel. And these are all four active female characters in the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit movie trilogy. So I excluded Shelob, um, Lobelia <laughs> and Rose because they are not actually that active because they don't have much time on screen and they don't talk a lot. Or if you think Shelob, she doesn't talk at all. So yeah, these two, uh, four in here were the suitable characters for this dissertation. And I need to say as well that as it was the gender and age blind, it was interesting because I didn't know who was answering for what and what their gender is. And because uh, everything was quite similar for each other, the answers I mean. So it was interesting to see how like the role models and their importance are relevant for almost everyone despite their physical feature. So here are three first questions for my survey. And I was wondering in here, do we need the escapism and or role models? And the first question was, do you think people need escapism and why? And if we think fantasy and sci-fi, they are not the only tools for escapism, but they are important ones. And actually in Hollywood and everywhere in Earth, they are actually coming of really important ones in the film industry. So this suggests that the escapism is important and it is also important to understand why it is so important. So most of the answers said that the escapism is needed because spectators need a place where they forget the real world where we are living in. So they use it for relieving the stress and it is a coping mechanism in a way and escapism feeds your own imagination and it helps you, for example, to solving problems and creating something new. And also Beth Webb supports this idea because she says in her article that fantasy is being vital for human mind as children use fantasy and escapism for learning and perceiving and for adults it's, it is actually a coping mechanism. So we all use imagination, fantasy, escapism, but just a different way when we are growing up. And many respondents also said that they wanted escapism for escaping actually and for healing them, let their mind rest and wander and then come back to the reali reality stronger. And in my question number two, why do you think people seek role models for themselves? Almost everybody said that they are seeking a role model that reflects a better version for them so they can become a better person as well. And almost everyone who answered for this question said they want somebody who is similar for themselves. And when we think the Donald Cook's idea of female presence in Hollywood actually, all genders are being one-sided when the male characters are dominating the movies. And it is actually quite dangerous to teach people to think this is the only way to go when most of the powerful roles are for men and women are just supporting them. And if you think gender minorities, 
it's even worse because their existence in fantasy and sci-fi films is almost completely ignored. So it would be really important to have more wide range of different kind of characters so everybody will have someone, someone to relate to. And in the question number three, what makes the perfect role model for you? So everybody said they want somebody who is strong and powerful and have a great sense of justice and who can be trusted. And role models who are true for themselves but empathic and kind towards others, they are the perfect role models, almost everybody who answered for this third question in here. And this suggests that everybody is still looking good and if we cannot find the good from our world, we escape to the fictional world to find it and maybe we will bring it back to our world then. So we use movies, TV, books, music, every kind of tools to find something good from the world. So then I asked about the characters and what people liked them. So at first, let's stay, take the oven in here. So actually in the book, it was not relieved that oven is a half elf and half human, but in the movie she was just an elf. Uh, so the dividing between two different worlds, what she has to choose, will she tra travel to the west with her king or will she stay with Aragorn? It's, it's quite different from the book if you think it that way. And she's actually the one who pursues her father to repair the sword of, of the king of Gondor and then Elrond takes it to the Aragorn. And in there, Aragorn, uh, Elrond will tell to Aragorn that uh, Arwen is actually dying because of the dark forces. And when Aragorn takes the Palantir, Sauron will shows him a false image of the dead Arwen in there. And that way Arwen actually works as a tool in the war because it will drive some anger and sadness inside Aragorn and he will take the chance and goes to the war because of that, because he thinks there's nothing else left and he just needs to defend the hobbits inside the Mordor. So having a problem with the dark environment actually brings her closer to the real life people in here because it makes her look more fragile. But actually overall, Arwen was staying distant for quite many because uh, she just seems like elven lady waiting for Aragorn to settle and marry her. And because she doesn't have that much screen time, she doesn't really get involved with many characters, only with her father, Aragorn a little bit with Frodo. So it makes her look really distant for the audience. And she doesn't evolve much deeper. And Arwen is actually a character of the patriarchal construction of this fictional society. And it is actually quite understandable how this is upsetting for modern people who are looking forward to more independent female characters. So Galadriel, she's the most powerful of the four and she's the leader, so she's definitely not the patriarchal character in here. And she's so shown first time in the Fellowship of the Ring when she's inside Lothlorien, if we exclude that she's actually speaking the prologue in the beginning of the movie. And almost everybody who responded for the survey says that her ancient essence makes her out out of reach to the audience member because she is really ancient and her ancient wisdom is not really a quality for the real person to look forward to when we are thinking the role models. But we will see that Galadriel is actually powerful enough to resist the desire of the dark power and according for herself, her fate is to travel to the west and fade away from the Middle Earth. So she knows that she's going to disappear and people are not going to remember her. And there is an idea that Galadriel is actually willing to be humbled. And she's 
all the time constantly working as a background worker in the Lord of the Rings and in The Hobbit as well. So when we have the scene of Frodo inside Shelob's cave, um, she's actually reminding Frodo that she has the crystal veil where is Erendil star's light. And therefore, Frodo is able to manage to go a little bit further. And we don't know what would happen to Frodo without her. So maybe she's one of the turning points in the movie. And she shows that not every deed has to be a visible to have an impact in there. So you can work as a background in, as invisible, and you still can have a huge impact. Not everybody has to be highlighted for your acts. So the dark shades, what we see in her, in the Fellowship of the Ring and the Battle of the Five Armies, they are reminding spectators how we are all influ influenced by negativity and therefore we are capable for horrid acts. And it shouldn't be the dominant power, but it should be a force we have to use when there is nothing else left. And it is better to fade away and work as invisible than do something horrible and be remembered from that. And one point, what was highlighted in there was that before Galadriel steps on the ship in the return of the king, uh, she gives the last glance to the Middle Earth and sh she has quite a while and just suggestive smile on her face. And it is like she's knowing that she's going somewhere, that she's not able to return. And in the movie, of course, we assume that she doesn't know what's in there if we exclude the books from there. So it will show how important it is to have positive and curious attitude when you are in front of the unknown situation. So uh, we should be encountering that thing inquisitively. So Erwin, the only non-elf, so it made her easy to identify with. And she's surrounded by quite depressed situation as she has no female relatives around her and all the male ones are leaving her in one way or an another. So her cousin dies and uncle is repressed under an evil spell and her brother is banished. So she is hopeless and the feelings from spectators, whether she was isolated and lonely and almost too melancholic, but then she's able to carry herself anyway. So it seems like even she doesn't have a bit of hope for the future and she wants to die, uh, but still carrying on and not doing horrible acts for herself. And it makes her rel relatable for those audience members who have seen the bottom of their lives. And the most important thing in Erwin was that she refuses to be a victim so, and she says that she's uh, the most scared of the cage what waits her as a woman and how she might get used to it and accepting her destiny. And she doesn't want to accept it, so she comes her own knight in the shining armor. And so she's expecting to be as the other ladies in Rohan, but instead she wants to go to the war, disguises herself as a male and helps to save her king. So uh, Erwin is that way really important that we have a character, even she is a fictional one, that she suffers and manages to survive and find peace and it pours hope to those who feel the same way she does. And one thing people were answering that there was no really interest for the one-sided love story for Aragorn. And people were thinking that, is she loving the idea of Aragorn saving her? Uh, or is she loving the fact that uh, he's saving her people? So when the Aragorn says her that he cannot give her what she wants, she takes the sword herself and goes and saves the kin. So that is one of the proof of maybe it was the actual act she loved. So Erwin gives an important idea in here that there is nothing so undesirable for a person that you cannot survive it. 
So Toriel, this was the most divided character in here. And she was actually created for the movie. She's not in the books. And she was created because there was gender imbalance and the working crew in there, actually Jackson and Boyens, they wanted to add more female characters who have a bigger role in there. And they didn't want to create one just for the sake of having a female character, but they wanted it has to have a purpose in the story and have to be an active part for the fictional story. So it was really troublesome for them to decide where they put one, because if you think there would be a female hobbit following Bilbo, it would be quite ridiculous, actually. So a uh, wood elf warrior in Mirkwood Forest was a good decision decision for them and it was the best solution and it's following the story quite naturally in there without having a disconnection from the characters. So actually Tolkien described that wood elves are more dangerous and less wise than high elves but Jackson and Boyens wanted Toriel to be a young and curious wise and kind one. So then we come with the interracial relationship. It has been a dilemma for centuries in our world and also in Middle Earth. And there is a really old fashioned attitude in this idea towards women that men go to war, women stay home, and Toriel actually does everything else. So yeah, it's, it's quite easy, interesting to see that she was actually presented inside a fight scene and that way, making her way to the Kili's heart in there. And the relationship with Kili di actually divided the audience quite a lot, or who responded for the survey, that some thought that it was really boring and unnecessary in there. And some thought that it, the interracial relationship was welcomed and add to the movie, as otherwise it would have been just a battle to the battle to the battle. And we don't know what happened to Toria after the movie trilogy. And she seemed really melancholy in there. After Kili died, she's asking why it hurt so much to lose somebody. But why she was also liked was that her way to deal with the loss and ability to give the last goodbye, it gives hopes for the people who have encountered the same kind of situation where you have to let go. So she was a great reminder how to do it. And then in the survey, I had a question in here that uh, who do you think that is the most suitable role model for yourself? And actually, you can see that Elwin was the quite liked one in here, almost 60% of total answers. And the least suitable was none. So almost everybody thinks that someone of these were actually quite suitable. So Galadriel was the second one. Even she was said that she's too ancient. Toriel was the third one because she was so divided because, and somebody was just yelling that she doesn't belong in the movies because she's not in the books. And Arwen was the least liked in this question in here. And the least suitable role model also in here is Arwen. And the second one is none. So this actually makes it quite sure that quite everybody was taught to be a suitable role model. So the conclusion. Um, Soraya Kemali has been thinking this in her article that globally there are actually two and a half male characters for every one female character in the movie. And I'm just speaking characters generally, not the ones who are speaking inside or having lines or having screen time, but just any kind of character. And this is also the case in the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit trilogies, as in these six movies, if you think how long they are, there is only four active female characters in quite many hours. If you, of course, exclude the Shelob and Lobelia and Rose in here. So Kemali is worried that in her article that there, how the gender imbalance affects children's imagination and their self-esteem, as usually the female characters are shown by over-sexual representation on the screen than men. But this is not actually the case in these two trilogies because quite all the female characters are dressed properly in here and quite elegantly as well. 
they are not showing boobs or ass. So uh, Galatriel and Arven almost all the time are wearing dresses and Erwin is wearing trousers when she's going to the war. But Toriel is wearing trousers through the whole two movies she's in. And it was actually found quite refreshing to have trousers because not everybody wants to wear dresses. And all these four characters seem to make radical choices as Galadriel refuses to take the ring and helps to destroy it. Arwen sac sacrifices her immo immortality and to spend the rest of her life with Aragorn and Toria confronts her king to learn more about the world around her. And Elvin disguises as a man to be able to help her kin in the war. So in the survey, the characters which are ready to act and stretch themselves to the extremity were found to be a good role models. And this combined to the self, selfishness, unselfishness and kindness were made the perfect for role models for everybody. So Elvin was the most liked in here. And her suffering and ability to rise from the bottom made her the most liked character based on the survey. And most, most of the respondents found her as a perfect role model, actually, for themselves. And uh, Arwen was the least suitable because she's quite a mobile character. And she was felt too static because she was just speaking and not really acting. Uh, doing any physical action. So it made her feeling that she was just a trophy for Aragorn. And the only purpose in the story for her was waiting for her man come from the war. So overall outcome, anyway, was that all these four female characters are good role models anyway, some more and some less. And the lack of women in these trilogies affect how we see the story as it is mostly men fulfilling tasks while women observe and wait from the distance. So the characters who actually take the lead for their own life or are leaders like Elatriel, they are really found admired in here and people really want to see more about that. So deduced from this outcome that it is among, among all the strong male characters, these women are and always be needed in any part of these movies. So, do you have any questions or own opinions or something? Yeah? Uh, so, my name is Eugenia. Hi. From Russia. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, one question is uh, when you are speaking about, uh, you asked some people about role model, uh, have you asked only women or men too? Have you asked men about which uh, male character in uh, Blood of the Rings is suitable role model? Yeah, the, yeah, I actually made a survey and it was gender blind, so I couldn't know about the gender of the respondents. So, and I know that there was some male also among the respondents, not everybody were female. There was 250 answers in total, so I cannot really know what men think these as a one group, but I can see only the one big group who are thinking that almost everybody liked the Eowyn. So I'm thinking that most men also liked Eowyn as well in here. I think uh, my second question is, uh, well, uh, there is a big Silmarillion epos and we have quite many um, female characters that uh, really rule this world. Uh, Varda and Beet, uh, Melian, Philodor uh, Luthien, uh, that is uh, absolutely acting and she's fighting for her love. Uh, she comes to Morgan to, to find him with her women, with her sons, and uh, uh, she saves her, her love. It's uh, quite the very opposite of uh, a woman knight that is uh, trying to save uh, his uh, name. So uh, why are you not speaking about Silmarillion 2? Why only? Because I, I'm only speaking about the movies in here. I'm not speaking about the books because I was studying drama. So it had to be something to do with the performing arts. So that's why I'm 
speaking only the, the movies in here and not the books, because if it was the books, it would be completely different about the survey and whole dissertation and everything. But because what I was studying, I needed to con concentrate only the movies in here. So that's why like Lucien is excluded from here as well. Even I know that she is really powerful and wonderful character. But yeah, there was some time management problems as well because I needed to do this quite quickly. So yeah, that, that's why they are excluded. It's, it's not really intentional in here. Is there other opinions or questions? Do you think that uh, uh, the reason that Tarwe was not the least popular, Arwen was, but for Tarwe's uh, less popularity is that uh, that they made a female character for the story that doesn't have female characters, uh, but the only story they think to tell with that is a love story. Do you think that would factor in why many people who would normally be okay with this dungeon like the character that much? Yeah, I think that's one of the truth in here because quite many said that they didn't like the interracial love story because it felt really forced for them. And it's okay, it's also an opinion and not everybody seeks for love and it is actually quite true that quite many times female characters are in movies just for the love story and you cannot really see too many characters without any love story. And, well, if we exclude now modern Disney movies, because they are actually making great progress in there. But yeah, it's it's one of the things, because people are quite bored that men can do anything, and women just have to love somebody and wait for them. So yeah, even we have an active character who is going to the battle and fighting and still having the love story, it might feel quite sad in there. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, well, I was wondering, um, obviously you already mentioned that uh, the books aren't really in the scope of this presentation, but um, uh, on a more sort of uh, personal level, would you uh, know of any sort of contrasts between the uh, films as opposed to the books, other than the fact that Tauriel is kind of added in to the movies? Like, are the characters represented very differently in the novels than they are in the films? Um. Yeah, in some way, because if we think, for example, Arwen, she's actually having one scene in the film, which is played by a male elf in the book. So when she goes to save Frodo, it's actually Glorfindel, who is Elrond's friend in there. So it's actually one thing they tried to add for Arwen to have more like physical act in there, but it was quite the only one she was doing, so it didn't really succeed. But yeah, in, in the actual book, she's even more uh, static in there, that she's speaking a lot, but not doing a lot. But if we, if we think Galadriel, she's all the time mentioned in the book, and I think she's mentioned more than in the actual movies, but she, they are still speaking about her how kind and helpful she is. And when we see that she's actually working background, it's quite interesting because you can see it more visually in the movie than in the book. But yeah, if we think the, the Hobbit, why there is no female characters, it was written in 1937. So the era was completely different. We cannot imagine that it was written in 1910s and 1920s. So if we think how women were inside the society, it's quite understandable that there are no female characters because the world was not ready. So if we think the Lord of the Rings, which was done in the 50s, so it's, it's quite like unheard of to have these kind of female characters. Even we, we might feel that they are static, but a female character even speaking inside a book published in the 50s, which is actually a story made mostly for men, as a like adventure and fantasy book, and it's it's quite yeah. Tolkien did really good work in there, and also if we think Erwin, she is really radical for the fifties people. And more? No? Yes? No? Yeah. 
or hypothetical and they are now making the new uh, Lord of the Rings TV series. Uh, what do you think, uh, uh, hypothetically, what do you think are, are they going to do with like female characters because there are some that are going to be, like I think Aragorn is going to be there, so they're like going to be using or original characters, but not non-original characters, but they're also probably going to create new characters because it's a new era that's not really going through in the books, so do you think like female characters, new, more, better writing female characters will be there? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think there will be. Well, this is my opinion only. <laughs> but yeah, because I heard a rumor that the TV series is going to be about the younger Aragorn. So, of course, there might be Arwen also inside the TV series because we don't know what, what time it is going to be based on, what time of his life. So, But yeah, I, I think there will be. And it would be really interesting to see some female rangers in there as well because... They speak about the rangers, but not too much. And inside the movies, we don't really know who they are. They are just saying that Aragorn is ra a ranger and then they are forgotten. So uh, there is a possibility that there is female ra rangers as well. So it would be really interesting to see. There will be the potential for there will be, there will be a female uh, on the side of the villains. Possibly. Hopefully. <laughs> Everybody's feeling shy today, or are you already tired? Yeah? Well, uh, do you know that Tolkien himself despised Arwen because in the books and uh, in additional materials, Arwen, she didn't sacrifice the life as Lydian did. She, uh, after, after the death of uh, Argon, uh, she came to Lorien and lived there uh, under, under the golden trees and after that she get back to what you She didn't die uh, with Argon. So, so the story of Argon and Argon is quite different and uh, maybe uh, this uh, um, this attitude towards her from the author himself of this book, maybe this uh, attitude is um, transferred into the movie and into uh, people's opinion about Arvon, because Arvon is kind of a coward. She's passive and she, uh, she, she, she doesn't do much. So uh, if author himself despises her, so now we see that people don't want to be like her. Maybe there is some connection between these facts. Yeah, it's it's it might be because people actually like actions. If we think as as a human race, we are quite different from the elves, and we have to remember also that Arwen is quite old. So that might be one of the reasons why she is so static. But for us as humans, we want more action, and we want to do more, and see more, and feel more. And that might be one of the reasons as well why the people who answered for the survey didn't find her as suitable as a role model. Some people might like the like quiet lifestyle where you are still, but not everybody. It's not for everybody's piece of cake in there. Yeah? Uh, I was wondering, why does it say that Arun goes back to Valinor? Does it say Arun goes to Valinor? No, in the appendices and the tale of Aragorn and Arwen, she dies in the Yeah, and it's for very thing. And gets back to the north, she didn't sacrifice her life. She dies in uh, Lorien, and after that, she went to Mandus uh, realm. Not, she, she didn't die as, uh, as oh. human as uh, Lutian did. So, Lutian really sacrificed her own uh, uh, destiny to, to be like her parents, and that's why. Uh, on Tolkien's and his wife's uh, town, who is written very uh, uh, So um, there is uh, a morning star of elves, it's Luthien, and it, this is uh, something to uh, to worship really, uh, her, her destiny. And there is a destiny of, uh, of evening star, uh, and it's Armand, and she's quite opposite to Luthien. So she's very different from uh, what Lutheran was. Lutheran is active uh, and proactive. Uh, she's a hero and she makes her sacrifices, and Arvon is just following 
this uh, dying elder world uh, in the third age, uh, the age of uh, humans. And uh, fourth age is uh, absolutely age of humans. It's not for us. Uh, this world is not for us anymore. So she's kind of a symbol of dying uh, of society, not the um, not uh, desire of something. Just following uh, stream of uh, of this dying. Yeah, but well, we have to remember that when they are making these films, they have to make uh, think the mainstream audience in here as well, who has not read the books, because it is the sad truth that not everybody has read them in here. So they have to make the story different in here, because they cannot accept everybody to know the background stories in here. So that's why also the Arwen is quite different from what we have used to see and her. Uh, tale is quite different as well that way and actually the it was interesting when you mentioned about the even starting and how she's dying and everything I, for the movie they made the actual necklace even star which symbols the love of Ar Arwen and Aragorn in there and when it falls to the crown from Aragorn and shatters in there and Aragorn thinks from that moment that Arwen is actually dead because the even star goes to the it's completely smashed in there. So it was quite interesting when he actually sees then that she's alive, that when he, he was thinking because of the necklace that she's dead. So yeah, there is one hint in there what is going to happen with elves as well. But of course, because there is no time to explain everything, they decided to make it to symbol their love, actually. As an observation to the mainstream, um, what you could also conclude from the survey is that the characters that were originally written and for which we have fact around by Tolkien, Eowyn and Galadriel were accepted or seen as better role models, whereas Tauriel, for example, who was an artificial character, did not quite work so well. So, in my opinion, it's quite important for a female character to have it well made. So if you if you do it too superficially or too kind of mainstream in mind, you'll in the end see it anyway that people don't appreciate it as much as you as simply as you thought they might. They might. Yeah, it might be also it would be different maybe if we would have seen Toriel more beginning from the first movie, of course it's now just Thinking in here, of course, Hobbit had uh, was at first only two movies, but they expanded it to be three. So, yeah, if we had more time with Toriel and her background story and everything, they tried to put the hints in there where she's saying that I'm just lovely sil Sylvan elf and that kind of stuff. But of course, if we think the mainstream audience, maybe they don't get what's going on in there as well. But Yeah, but if we think Erwin and Toriel, Erwin has more screen time in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because when you when you have time to develop the character, it makes more time for them. But also, why Toriel was not that liked was because there was quite many answers. Do you find Toriel suitable as a role model? Quite many answered no, because she is not in the book. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, she was not liked because she's not in the book. And I was talking about the movies in here. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's one thing. But I know that it's really the the books are precious for everybody who love Tolkien work and they love Lord of the Rings and so far. So if we change change something, it can be really devastating for some people. And we have to respect that. They need more time to adapt that the movie are, movies are different from the books because they are two completely different source of material. So of course, when you, when you read the book, you have to imagine everything, what's happening in there. You will have your own picture about the characters and so on. But in the movie, you don't have that kind of, like there is no place. Well, there is place for imagination, but because it's so visual and you can hear it and you can sense it and everything. And with the good work of directing and acting, 
they bring the characters alive and you don't see just the actors but the characters in front of you. It's completely di different from the book. So yeah, I understand when you have like the story inside your mind and then you see the movie and it's different. There is a new character. What is happening in here? So yeah, it can be devastating. And when we think Toriel, she has more screen time than Galadriel and Arwen actually in there. And if we, if we see Galadriel also in the Hobbit trilogy, she's not there a lot. Like she's just hopping inside the Battle of the Five Armies. She's there completely like 10 minutes maybe or something. She's not in the second movie. She's, well, a lot in the first movie. Well, she's quite recognizable in there and everything. Yep. Any more? Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to check, uh, since you mentioned that uh, kind of one possible explanation for the negative response to Tauriel was the fact that she wasn't in the books. Um, are, do, do you know how many of your respondents had actually read the books? And do you think the results would have been different if you had actually given the survey to a bunch of people who had never even looked at the books, who had only seen the movies? I think finding a group of 250 people in England who have never read the books might be a bit difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this uh, the survey was global, so it was given to people through the uh, social media, aka Facebook. So yeah, I I don't know where the people came from or how many has read the books. Of course, because I shared the link to the Lord of the Rings Society or the Tolkien Society, I assumed that quite many of those responders had read the books quite many times. <laughs> but yeah, not everybody, and uh, yeah. Of course, when I opened the survey after I closed it and I saw some of the answers, there were answers like my car is Toyota and so on. So not everybody were interested in answering there. I needed to delete something. But yeah, most of the answers were quite good. And I couldn't say how many has read the books or not. And it would be completely different if I asked, like, have, have you read the books and seen the person for that? Yeah, I, I actually, at first, told that there would be like 15 questions, but because I was a poor student, I didn't have money to pay so many questions for my survey. So yeah, there was only 10 because they were free. Yeah. Um, I have another question. Uh, well, all these uh, ladies are uh, kind of um, not very different uh, from each other, but Arvon, Tauriel and Gordon are uh, very different from Gladriel. Uh, the problems that Arvin, Dariot, and uh, Elgin solve uh, in their life are, uh, are looking kind of uh, quite uh, um, understandable. They are like us. They really, I can really imagine, uh, well, uh, some like classmates uh, that uh, fit into this, uh, uh, these roles. And Galadriel is solving problems of uh, middle earth scale she's uh, tested with uh, absolute power so kind of not many of people who I know uh, were ever tested with absolute power really so uh, most of people they don't understand what uh, what's the problem with, uh, with this ring and god right? so it's okay, she's a queen of lives. She uh, says, no, 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 I won't take this ring. It's okay. Uh, it's what we think she would do normally. Because the story of uh, Baramir that we, that we see uh, is, is a story, uh, well, he tried to steal, uh, he was wounded, and uh, he uh, understood uh, that he was wrong. It's, uh, it's all understandable. And we don't see the story behind uh, the, what, what's happened to Sir Lang, how he uh, failed this test. He was tested with power and he failed, absolutely. So uh, we don't, uh, most of us don't feel uh, what Galadriel feels. So most of us don't understand God. Uh, still, most of us really understand Arvin, the way I can go on. Uh, oh, uh, have you thought about uh, this disproportion of their stories? Uh, have you discussed it ever? 
because we have three, uh, three girls from, well, three, from three of our classmates and the prime minister. So it's kind of very different problems. Yeah, that's why quite many respondents say that they felt that Galadriel was quite distant for themselves because she's so ancient and we cannot really understand her. But she's still admired and respected and that's why she was fine, quite good role model because she is thinking the bigger image. We are not thinking that we all have to save one country or one world, but we can just adapt what Galadriel is doing for the smaller scale, like... Uh, what we are doing in our everyday life, and that's what the escapism is about, that we are adapting what we are seeing to our own life, and we don't have to take everything literally, that if well, somebody's saving the world, we don't have to, but we can save our own world, our like personal world where we are living in, because we all, all have our own world, and that way she was found a suitable role model because she's able to work and not taking the glory of everything she's doing, but just working in there in general. But yeah, I, the time is up in here, and I will thank everybody, and I hope you enjoyed this lecture in here, and let's have a good rest of the Robicon. Thank you.